Hey there, story enthusiasts. I'm Lucy. And today we have an incredible tale waiting to be discovered. Let's jump right into the video and experience the magic unfold. I used to let people steal from Walmart self-checkout lines. When I worked at Walmart, I used to turn the other way when people would steal. The machines had cameras and would beep if the AI saw something go into the bag without ringing it up, and I would just disable it and say, okay, all fixed, and walk away. To be honest, I felt that the pay at Walmart didn't pay me enough to argue and fight with the customers, so I just opted out. If someone said the price was cheaper out on the floor, I would just manually adjust the price for them, no questions. Most of the time people were honest, but a lot of the time people were stealing and there wasn't a damn thing I could do about it. Now that I don't work there, I totally know all the ways to steal from self-checkouts. One clever way I saw was to have a companion have a problem at a self-checkout a few machines down. While the cashiers are helping them, people would put whatever they wanted to steal in the bags and don't scan them. Another way I saw was to use the scanning guns. People would load all their food in reusable shopping bags as they shop, then they'd pull out a few cheaper items and scan them then walk out. Basically paying a little, but getting more. I realized the door people don't know what the codes are on the receipt because it's usually all hyphenated so badly nobody knows what's what. As long as people don't look suspicious and say bye or have headphones, we can ignore them. A few times when I was put on door, I would just pretend to look really, I was told if it's not a bag, look for that item, but bulky items like brawny paper towels 12 pack was labeled BR PAP T12, 12.99 on the receipt, and even if I didn't see it, I'd just let them go. I wasn't about to get stabbed for a 13.00 per hour job. So that's how this Reddit story wraps up. But hold on tight, because the next captivating narrative is waiting for us ready to captivate our attention and transport us to a world where imagination knows no bounds. I lost 500k last week in roulette. Parents' money, I am just a 21 crazy-ass guy. So my dad is the owner of a few apartments in PR, DR, and NYC, so he makes a good amount of money. This summer he gave me access to one of his accounts so I could have some fun. I traveled to Miami and this is what happened. I am very anxious RN and my father hasn't find out the mess I made. PD, I am Latin sorry for the English. And with those last few words, this Reddit story comes to a close. But fear not, fellow readers, because the next tale is just a click away. Let's venture forth and join the thriving community of Redditors in celebrating. I downloaded this app, and I'm deciding to post, definitely in my crisis era. Can someone explain why I'm having dreams about my own death? Like full-on plotted out death, and then I just turn over and fall back asleep. Phew, that's all for this story. Time to scroll through Reddit and find our next thrilling tale to devour as the subreddit threads are brimming with countless narratives waiting to be explored. You are not the only one with a rough patch in your younger life. Okay, let me start by saying just about everyone has had or gone through some rough time in their life. Siblings and I have several of these times in our past. One thing I have learned is that you get out of life as to what you have put into it. So if you dwell on your past, nothing may change in your outlook on your future. Life wasn't all that easy growing up. Strict and fighting parents, divorce, death, and remarrying. Neither of our parents were perfect. Whose are? There are four of us, one male, three females. I don't know any family where the boys and girls were all treated the exact same. Well, being the oldest wasn't always the easy position. Take care of your siblings, can't go there, you need to watch your siblings, and so on. There were things that happened my younger siblings didn't know about that was hidden from them. They may still not know. Now the situation. Some family members don't agree with a will that is in place. Their belief is that for the good of a parent, certain items should be handed out before the death of the living parent. Pretty sure this derives from the knowledge of how bad their friend's family fought after the death of their parents. Pushing this opinion onto our parent. When confronted about this, they go off on anyone that tries to talk to them. About how bad she was treated growing up, and that the parent is lying about what was told. This sibling does like to be in control and tries to be for everything, especially conversations. They are never wrong and monopolies all conversations, are rude and do gross actions in public, mainly to their spouse. Well, now she is mad because she was confronted about said conversation with parent and is now playing the martyr and claiming they won't talk to her parent again. How do you handle a spoiled adult brat like this, who by the way got away with way more than she is willing to admit? And with that, we've come to the end of this Reddit gem. Now, let's hit refresh and embark on our next captivating story, as the digital landscape of Reddit never fails to surprise and entertain. I've been S3LF harming for two years, and none one ever knew. 
I've been S3LF harming SRRY for the censor for two years and never told my family about it. Now it's summer and I'm so fucked. I'm 16 now and going to spend the holidays with my dad who I haven't seen for three years and who knows nothing about my scars. I've been trying to figure out a way to either tell them, my family, or a way to mask my scars forever, if that's even possible, as if nothing ever happened. Though it's just too hard to tell my dad since he's a bit narrow-minded and it would shatter him and maybe even break our family even more than it already is. If anyone has any tips to hide arms and thigh scars when going swimming, then that'd be a great help, thanks. And that's a wrap on this Reddit gem. But the treasure trove of stories continues... So let's not waste a moment and dive into the next thrilling chapter. As we navigate the subreddit landscape, let's unravel tales that enrich our minds and touch our hearts. Touch I am turning 24 in a few months, and I still suck my thumb. Um, I literally DKY. Just a habit I haven't been able to break. With the final sentence, we bid adieu to this Reddit tale. But don't you worry, dear reader, because the next story is just a scroll away. So let's continue our virtual journey through the realms of Reddit storytelling paradise. I drive around poorer parts of my city for motivation. So I'm studying to become a doctor and I'm not doing it mainly for the money but it does help. So every now and then I just drive around and imagine how shit my life would be if I just gave up one day. It's kind of fucked but yeah edit, I'm not proud of this that's why it's on an alt account on Reddit than someone I actually know. It's fucked, I know, but for some weird reason, it gives me motivation to do better. And that's a wrap on this Reddit gem. But the treasure trove of stories continues. So let's not waste a moment and dive into the next thrilling chapter. As we navigate the subreddit landscape, let's unravel tales that enrich our minds and touch our hearts. It was me taking a bite off the communal cheese piece and put it back at it. Throw away because you never know. I took that bite. Six years ago, I left my teeth mark on a huge piece of cheese when I opened the fridge and saw that tempting piece of Parmigiano Reggiano, aged 36 months, ready for the evening dinner with all 15 people. It was me taking a huge bite from the whole half kilogram piece of cheese and savoring it. I could have cut a piece with a clean knife, it was in the drawer right next to me but no, I took a bite like a shark. It was also me acting surprised when the first person launched the alarm two hours later, asking the still unsolved question, who TF took a bite from the communal cheese? It was also me, together with the three other people that organized the dinner, to participate to the investigation to find the culprit. I am the Dexter of cheese biting. It was me all along. It was so wrong, but it tasted so good. And that's the end of the story, folks. Now, let's dive into the next epic post on Reddit and see what surprises await us in the vast realm of you. Yes, I found the money. Thank you for the new piercing. There was a rather rough storm the other day while I was at work. Not super dangerous, but people were being stupid still going out into it. This storm was also keeping people out of my buddy's shop. He was bored and told me to come in for a piercing. Unfortunately, I am a broke gal and had no piercing money. A couple came through and bought a couple hundred dollars worth of lotto tickets and got mad that I couldn't cash their $200 winning ticket. We have a payout limit of $75. Well, they dropped quite a bit of money in a puddle and drove away. Thank you, random lotto buyer, for the piercing money. My industrial looks amazing. And that's the end of the story, folks. Now, let's dive into the next epic post on Reddit and see what surprises await us in the vast realm of you. I have a confusion to make, and I don't know who to tell. I have 26 have two young kids, a two-years-old and six-month-old, and am stay-at-home mom while going to nursing school. I am also engaged to be married to the father of my two kids. Thus, I have a content and full home life. However, my issues have been social or in regards to social life, such as family and friends. I should start out by saying I was an orphan kid. I became orphaned at the tender age of six months old. My father and mother had an argument, and he ended up killing her. He then died a few years later in prison due to health reasons. The crazy thing is, I happen to be the only child, so my maternal grandparents raised me the best they know. Once they passed away, my uncle took me to raise me in the USA. My life until 18 was okay. His wife was mean to me and did isolate me from others. She would also at times refuse to feed me or even buy things. As a result, I left their home at the age of 18 and tried to continue my education at a university. At that age, I had a lot of people that were like families to me, mostly American people. They helped when I needed it and just became the family I never had. This went on for about three years, which I reunited with my other families in U.S. and abroad. 
They pushed me to become part of my people's community and pressured me to continue my culture, which I was fine with then. Then, slowly I left my American family and moved into the community while getting engaged to a guy from my country. Ever since, my life has been hell when it comes to social life. My community decided to excommunicate me when I was raped by a guy, and he was arrested for that. They felt that I as a woman should just swallowed what happened and let it be, but I wasn't about to let this moster walk, so I reported him, and he was charged. After that, my fiancé decided to move us to a different state and community to avoid them. Again, in this new community, I am also experiencing issues. I was getting along well, until recently they decided to make me the target of the group and just treat me horribly. The whole situation arise when one of the ladies became a single mother and needed help as she couldn't drive or read and write. I was basically doing everything for her, like filling out paperwork for jobs and getting her assistance until she can afford it. My fiancé was also driving her around wherever she needed to go while I would babysit her three kids. I eventually realized that I also do things for her, but whenever I ask her to babysit my kids, she would have excuses. For example, when I went to the hospital to give birth to my daughter, I asked her if she could watch my son for a couple of hours so that my fiancé could be with me. She told me she had another friend's kids at her house and that maybe it might be too much and that my fiancé doesn't need to be with me. I just told her to forget it and he stayed home. Similarly, when I had to go to school while my fiancé was at work and couldn't take off, she refused saying she was busy. She didn't have a job at this time and I had offered to pay her. Anyway, this is the behavior of women in this community. They never call me to check on me or even offer to help me when I need it. I feel stressed and have anxiety all the time, especially when I am around them. They also tend to talk about my parenting abilities and make me feel like a bad parent and person. Anyway, I know I need to cut them out, but I am afraid I won't have any friends or people since I already don't have families. My fiancé also is like me, he doesn't have family members here. I feel like a loser and just worthless. I feel unable to make friends or even become part of a group. My fiancé does not know if this is I don't want him to think of a failure. Thanks for reading. Lol yes I meant confession, I was typing rather fast hence the mistake. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for joining us on this incredible storytelling journey. Your support and engagement mean the world to us. We would be delighted to hear your thoughts on this story in the comments section below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay connected with us and never miss out on the magic.